Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about some essential video equipment that I use to make videos on the channel. And also, it's going to be mainly a product review of the Zion Crane 3 axis gimbal stabilizer that I was sent by the Zion company for a fair review. So let's get to it. I just want to offer a quick piece of advice to some up and coming YouTubers out there. Uh, one of the best pieces of equipment that you can get for your YouTube channel is a good microphone. Now I've owned several microphones throughout my YouTube career. If you're looking for something portable, I would suggest the Rode Smart Lav that can be connected to your smartphone and you can just record sound through your smartphone and sync it up with the video afterwards. But my main microphone is my Blue Yeti. This is the microphone that I'm using right now. It has a variety of different directional options. It has threading that makes it compatible with a variety of different microphone stands and articulating arms. And it's just a premium high quality microphone for the price point. These are gonna run you between $100 and $150, but the next step up from something like this is probably in the two to three, even $400 range. This is going to more than suffice for your YouTube videos. Audio is incredibly important, and just to compare what typical audio sounds like, I'm gonna change the sound right now into video using my camera on my DSLR. So this is how the audio sounds when recorded on a DSLR or most smartphones without an external microphone. It sounds pretty crappy. In case you're wondering, behind me is a green screen. With green screens, you can do things like this. So for those of you who are just shooting the breeze on your smartphones or on a camera using the internal microphone, this is how you sound. Now let's go back to the main video and compare how a quality microphone sounds. Which brings me to the next point. If you are planning on going all in on YouTube, I recommend that you invest the money now and get yourself a good quality DSLR camera. I started on the Nikon D3300 series. I've now stepped it up to the Nikon D5400. These are affordable cameras as far as DSLRs go in the four to $600 range. Now, if you really wanna make professional looking videos, you can invest in a Lumix or something like that in the $1,500 plus range. The great thing about DSLRs over your standard video cameras is that it just offers a wide variety of different lens opportunities, which makes for an infinite amount more perspectives and modularity. Now, I was approached by a company called Zion, I believe, uh, pretty popular in the photography scene anyways, and they offered to send me this new camera stabilizer if I review it on the channel. Of course, I told them, you know, no strings attached. If I find something wrong with the device that I don't like, I'm gonna tell people about it. And they were okay with that, so here goes the video. If you're into video making and you're having a hard time making your videos look professional and you have the money to invest in something like this, I should say right off, it's going to cost you between $750 and $1,000. Uh, the higher end is going to be in Canadian dollars and the lower end of that is going to be in American dollars. Now what a gimbal is, it's something that allows you to stabilize your camera image. So when you're shooting video and you'll notice that if you're shooting it on your phone, or even on any kind of camera, whether it's an action camera, a DSLR, point and shoot camera, whatever you might have, the footage is probably gonna be pretty shaky. A, a gimbal is very similar to a gyroscope. It allows you to keep something stationary even when you're perhaps moving with it. So what this allows you to do is create, get really smooth looking images when you're moving with your camera, professional looking images. This gimbal apparently is used in some high-end movie production but I'm assuming that in those movies there's probably a lot more gear that they're using in conjunction with this gimbal it still does require a lot of skill in order to get those really really smooth shots and you still have to have quite a steady hand now in days gone by people would use these analog stabilizers which were much bigger and unwieldy this basically allows for the same effect but in a much smaller package i haven't had to recharge it yet and i've been doing a lot of testing with it in the field so far so far it's proven to be very good in that regard considering that it's basically holding a two pound dslr camera steady it can hold up to four pounds and that's keeping that stabilized so those three 
axis of motors are keeping that DSLR stabilized. So that requires a significant amount of power. So that it lasts so long is pretty cool. It runs on two 26500 milliamp batteries. The runtime is up to 12 hours. Now you do have to balance it beforehand. I'm gonna post some videos below because I'm not gonna get into all the intricacies of this product. There's many, many videos that cover the product much better than I ever could. Basically, I'm just introducing you to the concept of it. And if you do want more information and you do happen to pick one of these up for your YouTube channel, I'll post links in the description to where you can go to get more detailed information on how to set it up, on how to balance it initially, because you're gonna to wanna to balance the stabilizer prior to using it. That's gonna minimize the power drain and any other nerdy information you might wanna know. So this gimbal basically allows you to pan and tilt Move in 360 degrees. There's a couple different modes. There's one mode where it's gonna remain stationary. It's gonna be pointed in one particular direction. No matter which way you turn the gimbal, it's gonna be locked on to that particular position. And there's another mode that allows for an unlimited range of motion. You can also control it via Bluetooth, which is pretty cool. Although this is a feature you're probably not gonna to use too much has all the necessary threading so you can combine this with a tripod you can combine it with a monopod a selfie stick a slider comes with a very durable case obviously this is a piece of equipment that you're going to want to keep nice and secure it is fairly robust even for what it is they've got really good at designing these gimbals to be quite durable and this one is solid anodized aluminum construction as far as I can tell, it's been very well machined. All the parts are premium. There is measurement indicators on each of the axes. This makes it easier for you to balance your camera when you have different lenses on it. You can get much smaller gimbals that are just for use for your phone or for use for your GoPro. Most drones nowadays, particularly the DJI drones or the GoPro drones, come with a built-in three-axis stabilizer. That's what gives you that really smooth image when the drone is flying around. If it wasn't for that, the image would be very dicey. Now I would recommend a wider angle lens. When you use a lens that can see more of a scene, so a wide angle lens, for those of you who don't know anything about photography, basically that's a lens like on a GoPro or an action cam where you can see a lot more. You can see up to 170 degrees in some cases with a fisheye view of what's in front of you, as opposed to a very high millimeter lens. So something in the 50 millimeter plus range, which allows you to see much further, but with a much smaller field of view. Now, if you use a wider angle lens on your camera with this gimbal, the footage that you get is gonna look far more stabilized. If you're using a camera with a very small field of view, something in the 50 millimeter to 300 millimeter focal range, then the little shakes are gonna be far more noticeable. Now, I'm just using the 15 millimeter kit lens on my Nikon D3300. For most of these shots there certainly is other lens that I would like to try with this now I should add once again that this isn't something that's necessary for you to have a successful YouTube channel there's a lot of vloggers out there who don't use really sophisticated equipment at all and you can get away with that to a certain extent but if you're like me and you're trying to give somebody a presentation that's gonna be easy for them to digest and it doesn't hurt to have this extra equipment to create more professional looking videos. So, you know, I, I really can't say too much bad about this. And based on all of the reviews I've seen of the thing, there's not a lot of bad reviews on it. Now, I would totally tell you guys if there was something wrong with this device. But as far as I can see, it's pretty cool. It functions as any other gimbal would. The battery life is great. It works as intended. Now the shots aren't as smooth as I thought they might be, but that has a lot to do with the technique and how I'm using it. I'm confident that once I get to learn a bit more of the tricks on how to move and learn the different techniques of movement cinematography, then indeed you could do really professional looking footage with this but if you're just a total amateur and you pick this thing up and you expect to start making Hollywood films then you're gonna need some training before you're gonna be able to do something like that now this gimbal is actually used in some big budget films but like I say you're gonna really need a professional photography background in order to do this it's not until you really begin to explore the world of cinematography 
that you really begin to appreciate how much work and technology goes into getting you those amazing shots that we just take for granted when we're watching these videos on YouTube or in the movie theaters or whatever. If you ever watch any TV show, for instance, count how many times the camera angle changes in a minute and count all of the obscure locations that that camera would have to be placed in order to capture those shots. The sad thing is with YouTube production quality, what I've found is that the higher quality the production, the less and less people notice. That's because we are very spoiled in terms of the high standard for audiovisual effects that we're all conditioned to come to expect when we're watching any professional production. This probably creates the allure to that raw, flat image which is taken by some guy just talking in front of his smartphone. You know, people like that. People, I, I get that people aren't watching these videos just to be entertained audiovisually, but they're watching them because of the, the information that we're bringing to people, the ideas that we're talking about, the different topics and the talking points. But as I said before, I am an artist at heart and I take pride in creating professional videos that people enjoy. So I hope you found this information useful. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, support the channel. If you do happen to be someone who's into photography or YouTube video creation and you have questions about the gear that I use, feel free to post it in the comments below. If, you, if there's a question mark there, I'm more likely to respond to it. I can't unfortunately respond to all of the comments. There's just too many but uh, I do read most of them. And if you want one of these amazing Zion gimbals, I will post a link in the description. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Canadian Prepper out.